You hereby notify that a special workshop meeting of the Palakka City Commission has been called to be held on Thursday, July 26, 2018 at the regular meeting place at City Hall, City Commission Chambers, 201 North 2nd Street, Palakka, Florida. The meeting is called to commence at 3 p.m. The purpose of the meeting is to hold a budget workshop fiscal year 2018-19. Please govern yourselves accordingly. We've already had our we've already had invocation and pledge. We will now move to our roll call. Mayor Hill. Here. Vice Mayor Brown. <coughs> Commissioner Borm. Present. Commissioner Campbell. Present. Commissioner Pascal. Here. All are present and accounted. Well, we have a quorum. Thank you. Well, now I'm going to for public comment. Is there anyone here for public comment? Public comment is limited to three minutes. No action will be taken on topics of discussion. Seeing no one, are you here for public comment, sir? Yes. If you can, just for the record, fill out the yellow speaker card after you've finished. Yeah. You already got one? Come on. Come on. I don't have I'm sorry. Do you have any more? Okay. If anyone else wants to speak to your public comment, please fill out a speaker card uh, so that we can have that for the record. Mr. David Lang. Yes, thank you. Appreciate your time. Thank you, sir. And just for the record, can you state your name and address? My name is David Lang. I am a resident of Putnam County. I'm a, a voter every time I get a chance. Um, my okay. address is 43 West River Road, Placa, 32177. I used to have a really good job, and then I retired. Now I have three jobs. One of them is to represent a nonprofit by the name of Young Life. Young Life, I don't know if anybody here has heard of Young Life. Show of hands. No, okay. How about Ocean Life? <laughs> or River Life? Salt no? Life. Salt okay, life. it has nothing to do with that. <laughs> it's a youth outreach program. If you remember nothing else, it's a youth outreach program. Young Life is over 75 years old. I was in it when I was a kid. Now as an adult, I'm on what's called committee. And we try to do fundraising, things like that. We're going to have our first weekly club kicked off at the First Presbyterian Church on August 27th. We're doing a couple other fundraising events. Basically, like I said, it's 75 years old, reaches 2 million kids a year. The sad thing is there's nothing in Putnam County. We are surrounded with D. Lane, Jacksonville, St. Augustine, um, Gainesville, and none. We're the donut here of, uh, uh, for Young Life. So it's a huge organization. Um, and uh, several of us here are on committee, adult committee, and that's pretty much it. I mean, I could go into more detail if we have more time later on. If anybody has any questions, feel free to touch base with me, but we uh, appreciate your support and your prayers. Do you have any contact? I would like to sit down and talk to you. I do. If you can leave me with your information, I'll I will. Thank you. Any questions? What's that? All right, what do I got? A minute? A minute and a half left? You got about a minute and a half left. And you yes, could leave a couple of flyers. Additional. We're good? Oh, if, you, if, that's what you, if that's what you want to share, that's... that's yeah. Um, Commissioner, isn't that the same? And leave enough yeah. information. For yeah, that's, yeah, we've got a fundraiser. we got the fundraiser this um, coming up August 7th at Zaxby. So we would like for people to come out and help with uh, that particular fundraiser. It's going to go from 5 to 8. Um, on, on, on that day and then we got another event coming up uh, August 11th it's going to be a, a, a preschool bash, back to school bash <coughs> for uh, teenagers or what have you and that's going to be at the ARC um, pool from 4.30 to 7.30 so we got that event coming and we'd like to have everybody to come out and, and enjoy the fun food and fellowship. And I didn't, I did uh, distribute the flyer on that Okay. So I appreciate it. Yeah. Send it to right. press. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks. your time. Thank you. Is there anyone else here for public comment? Seeing no one, we'll close public comment at this time. We'll move on to our presentation of the proposed fiscal year 2018-19 general enterprise fund budgets, fiscal year 2018 trim calendar requirements. Hey, good afternoon. We'll go right into it with a fun budget presentation. Suppose you graduate from high school. Let's say you just slide by. All right, and now you've got to find a job. Now, what kind of salary do you expect uh, for a regular person? <laughs> 
<laughs> well, we had people retiring that wasn't making even ten dollars an hour. Some of them, you know, and so that's that's a big thing, that's and it's also helping improve the quality of life. You got people. You got people that have been committed to the city for two decades, and they didn't make ten dollars an hour. That says a lot about where we were, and, and, yeah. I, and I think being able to be at this point, uh, and it's taken, uh, I think, really a lot of business efficiencies being put into place. Um, you know, particularly in the public works sector. Um, and I, I think that was, it's critical to where we are and we have to continually move forward by being uh, fiscally responsible. And I think, um, you know, being able to build reserves up uh, and looking at all those things has really been the key point for the whole process. If they didn't do, if they didn't do their job, we were only doing ours. I'm happy to report it affects 35 individuals. So 35 total. I yes, thought it was 34. Okay, right. that's cool. And, and, and oh, is it, is it 34? And Commissioner Campbell I think it was 34. brings, up, he brings okay. up a good point. Two years ago, a 5% raise. This yep. year, we're looking at a 4% cost right. of living increase right. across the board, and I think all those things are critical um, you know, for, for the city of Palaka. And also, it leads to better retention. And we don't have to worry about losing money with training. And because it, it allows people to stay in here. And, and we're becoming more competitive, and there are other things on the horizon. And it's just an upswing. So. so this just kind of shows our health insurance rates and the difference, um, what a 5% actually does. For the general fund, <coughs> it's about $38,000 <coughs> increase. And across all other funds, it's a $23,000 increase for a total of 62. <coughs> just take the Christmas lights. <laughs> 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 okay, so moving on to the general fund, you'll see up in the top, it's a little small, but this is kind of just an outlook of where our revenues and our expenditures are and la compared to last year's budget. We're um, back up to 18% reserves, so we had a, two major storms that hit that caused a decline in our reserve balance. However, we're happy to report that it is moving up. And as soon as we receive, you'll see down here in my notes, I'm extremely conservative with our FEMA um, <coughs> reimbursement. So hopefully it will be a little bit better than that, but that's a conservative guesstimate. Okay. Any questions as we move forward? I just want to remind you, make sure you keep all the receipts with FEMA because they have screwed some cities a lot bigger than us in. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so revenues. Um, as we mentioned earlier in the CRA, 6% is what we're looking at for property increases. Um, a lot of our revenues are based on state estimates, so um, that's where we get a lot of our um, figures from. The fire assessment revenue, we um, budgeted 98% based on a 95% collection. Um, it does make up of 60% of the fire department budget. And if we were to remove the fire assessment, we would have a millage rate of 9.8950. Yep. Um, we are proposing to raise the rent for Price Martin. Um, we, we just want to do an overview um, of the rental rates compare, uh, comparison. We have some money in the budget, you'll see later on, to make some improvements to the center also. Can I ask a question? How much is the rent now? How much? It's like three fifty or something like that. It's $160 for four hours. <laughs> and they usually get it for about eight all the time. So you're and then half the time is getting their money returned. I can tell you at about $40 an hour compared to the other places in town, we're behind them at $85 an hour at the ravines after hours, as well as $60 an hour at the women's club. Okay, but that's places a lot of people can't go. Understood. I mean, because they can't afford to go there. The, that center was put there to, to make sure everybody had somewhere <coughs> that they could use, and it, it's not being utilized enough. It's sitting there, and we only use it for rentals when we should be doing other things in there. So I want to put that until you hear. We got a grant to build it. Rent portion of and it should be it should have some other free use going in there with it, even with the rental, because it's for the whole community. But, and we have done a lot with it. In fact, they took we had a stage in there. They took it out. They took the curtains out. We had all the stuff 
fixed uh, we're, ready to have. We're looking to make some there. facelifts in there, yes, ma'am. So there's been um, and add some security. And so one of the things that's proposed, like that, right? one that you see in the proposed budget is uh, um, some additional improvements, including uh, resurfacing of stages, things of that nature. And so all those things are kind of there. A simple thing is getting some copies of pictures. Like the water management district gave me a thing one time that had pictures that we could get them and just pay for the framing of them. Or uh, pictures like our, people don't know we have an airport. Something that shows all the good stuff in Palaka that, uh, that we have in Palaka, the Bronx House. Put it along the walls around there so in the entrance way so that we promote the city as they go in there. And that would not cost a whole lot of money, but those pictures showing our assets in there would really help and it would help that building look better inside. Yes, so the next um, thing on the revenues is that we are losing the red, red light camera. It is matched with an expenditure in police. So you'll see that later. I don't think anybody's going to be upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> don't see any tears. Okay, so um, one thing is the we talked earlier about moving the 8000 into the uh, general fund. We have an addition of a $20,000 for a public information officer or um, to try to rebrand the city or branding of the city. Um, we have an addition of a finance clerk. We will only hire this um, clerk mid-year after we do a mid-year review of the budget. So if indeed we look like we're trending to where we can't hire it, we will hold off on that. Um, building and zoning um, contracts has decreased significantly um, due to the building inspections change. We are proposing to reorg the building and zoning department. Um, we took your considerations um, at our one-on-one -on -one meetings and we decided to um, temporarily do away with an assistant city clerk and see if we can make some reorgs internally to see if what we can do with that. Um, also with that, um reached out to the county as well to see if there is some interest there. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be placed on the on the agenda for our next joint session in August just to see if it fiscally it makes any sense. To do what? To, yeah. From a reorganization standpoint to look at whether, see what the cost would be for ha having them deal with some of the permitting services. One of the glitches you've had thus far is just um, how scheduling a permit takes place because it's done in two different places and then seeing if it's a way, if it's a cost savings for us or efficiency, which allows reallocation of positions to other places where we have benefit. Because I know the commission has always talked about having a live voice answering the phone and things of that nature, just seeing if there's a way that we can kind of tie those two pieces together. Okay, but I want us to watch real carefully because the county in, a few years ago was trying to suck us up and change the charter and move so that we didn't have the city commission. I think we're closer to the people. We understand what the city of Palatka needs more than anybody else. And I want to make sure, I don't mind partnering with them, but I want to make sure that we still are able to take care of the people we need to take care of. Um, okay. okay, so um, again, there's a reduction in the expenditures in the police department based on red light cameras removal. We'll be moving into our um, police car lease agreement. It expires in September. We did a 13, 14, 15 at five year increment. So we're going to just renew those um, 18, 19, 20 um, within the constraints of the existing budget. The um, police department intends on applying for a grant that's going to afford them two positions. The grant will um, take care of 75% of the cost. We will have a city match of 25% for the first year. And then over the next couple of years, and correct me if I'm wrong, I believe it's a three year, two, uh, three or four year. The grant? Yes. Um, the grant is, uh, I want to say, I want to say it's a three year grant. Three years, okay. And at the end of that third year, um, the city has the responsibility of carrying the positions for an additional two years. However, our existing plan is that um, we are going to be losing two uh, staff members this year uh, that are higher paid uh, at one of our higher paid chains, I guess you could say. Um, and when we lose them, that money that is currently in the budget will facilitate the money that would have been the 25%. So we'll be able to replace them for their current position as well as build on the other two positions without it going against, or I'm sorry, not against, but without it having to increase our current
current budget. Right. And also maybe promote from within. Yes, sir. Or, uh, yes, sir. And the, and the cost savings at the end could uh, could also create a third position, right? Yes, sir. Um, moving on to the fire marshal, we actually have a fire chief who is dedicated to doing both jobs. Um, we therefore we have reallocated these dollars into making three firefighter positions into engineers, and this aids with shift coverage and overtime expenditures. Um, we have an addition of a laborer um, in the streets department. With the fire department. We, we, we still fall within compliance of the, the union contract? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, we have reallocated our resource manager or the grant administrator salary into a split between the utility fund and the general fund. This is based on work-related duties. She's doing a lot of grants that fall within the utilities, and for the next few years, it'll be the same trend. Um, so we felt that as if um, we should move that. That's Mandy, right? It yes. is. Um, we split, this is something new that you'll see, we split parks and recreation because we found that it was um, an initiative to start working towards programming of all different sorts. Um, we, in the recreation department, we're reallocating a part-time coordinator to a full-time coordinator, or full-time supervisor, sorry, it won't be a full-time coordinator, it will supervisor. Um, the foremen and the six part-time recreation employees have moved over. So this is not necessarily an increase to the budget. This shifting, it is truly a split. Um, you will see an increase in the electricity cost just because um, we're hoping to utilize the fields. Um, more programming for the parks um, and programming in general. And then if you go down to, let's see. Yes, we have a retained foreman labor and part-time maintenance. Would that also increase the, um, if, you, if you're increasing the parks, then would that also take the maintenance as well, not just electricity? For the recreation? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are minor um, things that we need to, as we move on with right. the programming, we will have to reallocate between the parks and the um, right. recreational dollars to make sure that we are putting the expenditures in the new department. This is a new department, okay. therefore we're kind of guesstimating right now. Um, and so we will have to probably tweak it and do some more reallocating of the existing money that we have um, between the lines. What we did at one time, we had given the parks and recreation to the county when they gave it back. Uh, Babe Ruth and some of those other people came in and helped keep up the park, volunteered to help work and keep the parks and stuff up. So I don't know if they'd be interested in helping us in any of those ways, but that might help okay. us with our we actually have um, We actually have contracts right now for mowing. And uh, so one of the things that's going on now is there, there are existing contracts for mowing and also for uh, all chemicals associated with maintaining the parks. It's a different type side than you've had before. Um, it, it was there back in the 80s, but it, 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 it kind of left us and we ended up with behavior uh, based upon some of the ways that things were being maintained. Uh, the standards are significantly higher as it relates to the fields. Um, and with the staff that we've got in place, um, we should have su sufficient staff to be able to handle um, the exterior cutting of the common areas of the parks as well as continue on with, with the um, contractors doing the mowing until we get to a point where the, where the where the department grows, where we actually purchase a real mower and do it in-house. Um, but again, once you do that, then you fall on having to purchase chemicals, additional training and certification for staff, all those other things. And it's almost better just to outsource it so that you don't end up dealing with a lot of those other issues. Okay. And then also note in recreation, um, there is no funding in there to deal with the Booker Park project um, from the standpoint of um, the addition of the additional fields in place just because um, there's some grant opportunities that we're going to seek throughout the year and also see what we can do from a capital fundraising standpoint, see if we can get um, private donors to come in and assist in that part of it. Um, one more thing to note is in addition to the reorg, um, we heard your thoughts about customer service. Therefore, we have put a little bit of money to redo and upgrade our phone system. Um, so hopefully our intent is to have a live person answering the phone and then we will be able to transfer out accordingly. So, thank you. You're welcome. We're actually I'm having changes made to the system too. Right. To our current system, our we're going to go ahead system. and work towards that, but we also are putting a little bit more there to bring our phone systems up to date. So, yeah. For information.
information purposes, Mr. Trigger, what, what, anytime that system changed and you redirected, was there a cost associated with that? Talking about the current system? Right. Um, not cost, just time. So uh, we've already paid for the system, we own the system, and the only time that we have a cost incurred is when we want the serviceman to come out here to make changes. So generally in the past, in order to conserve that money, we have waited until there was a problem to get him out here to address both because we have a, a contract with them to maintain the system, which we pay for annually. So you're, you're talking about a digit, you're talking about an analog, an old and an analog an system, system versus having a digital system, which would allow you to, to kind of do some more things right. from a technological standpoint. That'll be better overall. It'll even email you your phone messages. Okay, so um, questions, concerns? I, I want to go back to the assistant city clerk position. Can you kind of explain one that? More time? The assistant city clerk position. Okay. Kind of explain that to me again. How Great. you're looking at that. Great. So this is a temporary hold on this. Um, we um, have thought about the existing staff that we have, and we are hoping to reorg in a way that um, we will be using existing staff to do some of the... So that she... Correct. ...can have some... Oh, correct, correct. So we'll be doing some shifting, and that's where the um, county agreement maybe will come in to take some of the burden off of the existing staff, and then we will reorg appropriately. Okay. So do we have a plan if the county doesn't agree to that to still make sure that... We probably spent five or six hours okay. talking about it okay. um, during the last time, uh, during the one-on-one -on -one that, one -on -one that I had, mm -hmm. just going over different scenarios, and, and I think Ms. Trigger's kind of took the lead okay. along with Thanks. what scenarios would kind of work, and so they, they kind of worked together, Ms. Trigger's and Ms. Becker, to come up with something that kind of okay. makes sense. And, and, I, I, and, I, did re and I did retain uh, the caveat that if we're if, if this isn't working, then the position my, comes, the position comes right. back in. Right. Right. Okay, that's yeah. what I want to make sure. So we're going nice. to see how it works. Okay. And I think the other thing it does, just so we're conscious, is one of the things that we've been doing over the past few years is creating succession plans in each department because in many departments you have one person. Even mm -hmm. in HR right now, you still have one person, mm -hmm. and so we and you'll see that. Um, by creating a succession plan, one, it allows the existing staff that's in those departments to be able to leave and take vacation, or it also covers us in case there's a sickness or any unfortunate event which may call for them to be out, as opposed to scrambling and trying to make certain things happen. Any further questions on general fund? Yeah, I just want to make sure that we don't kill the people who are working hard. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. We forget. We overload a few people. Yes, ma'am. And mm -hmm. I, I kind of talked to them about it. When you do it, I just want to make sure that we understand all of us are human. All right. And that, yeah. was, that was my point about staff utilization. We have some people who are just really in Betsy with one of them. And right. those, and and then, and some we're going to be able to shift. I believe that mm -hmm. we're mm -hmm. going to work it in a way that we can shift some duties around that those that maybe can um, have um, the space in their uh, day to fill, mm -hmm. we're going to be able to fill that. Okay. okay. I think there's been conscious thought and, and also collaboration yep. to make sure that the people who found themselves working later, working longer, mm -hmm. um, without any additional help, yeah. had some reprieve. When you look at the, you know, kind of the, what you get with um, having the additional resource person in place at the River Center, um, also you know providing the additional assistant clerk duties. All those things were considered so that we didn't end up in that same place. We still got a couple departments mm -hmm. where fiscal constraints kind of slowed the process down, but I think we're building towards creating that total succession plan because for a number of years you just have you have one person running departments, and you know if we use Mr. Triggers as an example, you don't get you know you're afraid to take vacation because your apartment your department stops as a result of you going or you know, you lose out on critical time just because of your commitment to the city and now it's a matter of, of trying to put those things in place. Even when you look at um, some of the aspects of public works and some of the other places, we're slowly building that up from, from sanitation on, making sure there's a, a clear um, delineation of the w number one, number two, and if you can have the substitute person in place. Right. And speaking of that, um, with her 20-year um, step, um, her 20-year employment, it was supposed to be like, I guess, a step um, grade uh, increase or whatever. It's longevity know, increase. Right, the longevity increase. I don't think she got that. I got it part way into the year, so I, I do need to go back and pick up the rest of that. 
Right, the December yeah. to, uh, it, was, it was like a December to March. That's I've never talked to the city manager. Okay. You're going to take care of that. Right. So and, that. and I want to give you a good example of what the mayor is talking about, and I don't know if you guys noticed or not, but when I did actually take a vacation in June, yeah. the city commission canceled a meeting. Right, we did. There was no, be no one what? here who, agenda, to right. do my job, to, to develop that agenda, to do all the things that I am here 10 hours a day or longer. Or longer. Way. And I, and I have to tell you that when Logan came here, I am now accompanied at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> I see, we are both I see, here. I see. And, you know, and, and I know that she's got a lot to do and a lot to, to straighten out, and she's worked like a champ on this yeah. budget. And, and yes. I can't tell you how much I appreciate her expertise and the expertise of every department head and and the people in the departments are make the city. Right. So just they, making they, they just make it. That actually brings up a very valid point, um, and I don't think that it's addressed, and I want to make sure I say it so that we can. I think security is a very, very, very important thing to me. Um, one time I came back up here, um, to, and I saw Ms. Becker here, and it was nighttime. And the lighting around this place, first of all, I don't agree with them being here that late by themselves. Um, but I do understand they have a job to do. I wish they could do it from home, but I do understand. But I think that we do need to capture security um, to where we can at least brighten up what's going on around here or have some kind of security measures because these ladies leaving here all times of night, Betsy, no, I'll shoot her email when she responds, go home. Um, because I, yeah. it's not that I don't appreciate her working. I'm more concerned about the safety component, even though you're on the main drag, yeah. But still, when you walk out, I know when I walk out by myself, it's dark. So if we can address some of those things, if we can kind of see if we can create a line item for something like that, that would be great because we do need to make sure that our staff, even during the day, when you open these doors back here, there's not a sound that can be made to show that these ladies have somebody walking through here. So even if we have some kind of alarm put on the doors, those are things that I've noticed being around City Hall, talking to um, a few of the staff members, that we need to make sure that we build in funding to make sure that we are providing security, basic security safe measures place. to our um, employees safe. that work here in City Hall and right. any other place for that matter, but more specifically City Hall because I've witnessed me sneaking in through the back door and they have, not sneaking in, walking in. And, and, and you don't know you have somebody until you literally get there to that opening and you see both ways. And that, you know, that can be a tad bit scary at some point. And yeah. speaking to that point about safety, until we get that long-term plan in place, uh, we do have access to our city police officers, they right? That, that so we can utilize them and let, I mean, they can let them know whenever they're here and they can kind of maybe come and provide some of that security until we can get some long-term things in place. Well, it can, something to the immediate effect, um, even inside, we have to realize that money is being held up in the front. So even if we can address something like, you know, immediately, there are some things that we can address immediately or there are things that we can cushion for. I do agree with utilizing the um, police force. Um, that'll be a great idea until we can come up with that succession plan. But until then, there are some things that I think that needs to be addressed immediately. And we kind of voiced them before when we were talking about the reorganization of out front. Um, but I definitely think we need to try to build it in if we can, if we see that we can take something from something to add to something. Um, I think we, should, we need to look at that overall. Captain Newcomb. Yes, sir. Um, there's a, the, the police department can assist with some, with, you, you guys can assist with suggestions on what can be done from a lighting perspective or anything else, right? Yes, sir. We can do a security assessment on the property. Um, actually, I believe we did one on City Hall about five years ago. Um, I know we did one at um, Mr. Griffith's facility. Uh, we did one at the airport. And we did one, um, I want to say we did one at Price Martin, but I can pull those and we can go through. It's called a SEPTED survey, which is crime prevention through environmental design. Um, we do an assessment during daytime hours, and we do an assessment during nighttime hours to show where mm -hmm. the weak spots are of the buildings, or is it darker over here at night than it is over here, so we can identify where the lighting needs to be, as well as what kind of lighting, because some lighting is better than others. So, yes, sir, we can do that. Man, I'd like to see them call you if they're going to work late that night, you know, call y'all before 5 o'clock and make
make sure that you, they get some pa uh, patrol around here and then maybe when they're leaving the building, have an officer kind of yes, around so that they make sure they get to their cars and stuff all right. And that would probably be for any of our other employees that tend to stay a little bit late because we don't want anything happening. We've got such a good family, we don't want anything happening. Yes, Thank you. Good on general. Uh, except for we, can we make an, how can we make an adjustment for her additional uh, duties that she's taking on until we can um, her additional duties or that gap that she had can we do we have anything in the budget for, for are you talking about to back pay her to where she got her 20 year check we talked about back pay or she uh, you she, know, we yeah, can she make will definitely adjust. be able to she's we'll have her back pay okay but she, the other thing is yes, we have to talk about how much She's gonna get being interim too. I guess we'll do that now in the next city commission meeting. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. At the next. Okay. Thank and you. And we'll no be sure that we have Deborah here, HR the person. Name. That right. way we can make sure we're within the. Okay. okay. No, you want to finish what you No different than what we do, Mr. Yeah. Riddle. Yeah. Okay. I just didn't want it to All drop right. off the. And that would be within the current budget, so we're okay with that. Appreciate okay. it. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Moving on to better place, and it's a little small. small. Okay, so you'll see that um, our reserves are going from 13 to 12, but that is due to, let's see, a purchase. Okay, so this is another um, fund where we have the one cent sales tax, which is based on a state estimate. We have a purchase of a back truck. Um, it is um, going to be matched with a USDA grant for hopefully 50% of the expense. Um, you also see that we have the fuel farm grant. Um, this is contingent upon the um, riverfront and both operation contract. And so it's pending. We, you see the expense on the other side, you'll see that in a minute, but we will only spend that if we get the grant. Um, and then we have a transfer for a public works building debt service. In Better Place, we have engineering fees for the public works building and for future stormwater system, um, an analysis for that. We, capital outlay includes sidewalks, resurfacing, um, mowers, IT infrastructure, which is a big need that we've been discussing, and the price market improvements. We still have the debt service payment for the Frank George infrastructure. We have an existing fire truck payment that will be rolling off, and then we will have an interest payment for the new fire trucks, and the um, regular payment will not start until the year after. Frank George rolls off October of 19. Right, and that's 290. When? October 2019. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, we have the grant match expenditure for the back truck and the fuel farm. I did put a little note here because if you look at the budget how it is right currently, you'll see that it looks like it's lower than um, previous years or even as the year goes on. And it's just because the grant matches will, um, will be amending the budget throughout the year as we get grants for different projects. Any questions on Better Place? Okay. Moving on to the airport. Um, our transfer for general this year is 168000 That debt service will end 2023. Mm -hmm. Okay, so grants same with Better Place. We'll amend the budget as the year goes on. I know that they are actively pursuing grants, so we will see those amendments. Um, there's an increase in the hangar rentals. Um, we have more people staying and are renting them. And there's also an increase in the jet fuel on the revenue side and the expenditure side because we have a nice fancy jet staying there. I don't know where Mr. There right there. Yeah, yeah. Right there, there he is. Um, we do have one of the living wages for the $11 is included in his, or for two part-time employees in the airport. Um, 
the airport advisory board has asked that um, advertising and travel be increased. That way, um, we're able to attend, or I say we, um, Mr. John is able to attend other clients so that he can get ideas and um, continue the growth of ours. Um, ours have been pretty successful. We're also looking at increasing the fees, the rental fees, but we're doing an analysis right now. And so you may see a decrease in the transfer from general if we're able to increase those fees. Yes. And I do want to bring you guys up to date. Um, you'll recall that about a year, a little over a year ago, you all extended Passero's contract to get them through the wave of projects that they were currently on in that FAA um, airport in improvement grant year. I think the last one is the fence improvements. Is, is that right, Mr. Yule? Correct. And that one was kind of delayed because of the rain. Have they started on that yet? Still okay. Those are all current years. Those are all current right. year AIP, FAA, FDOT grants. And the intent was that we were going to take the airport engineers out to bid as we're required to do every five to seven years by FDOT. We've kind of, we're off that mark just a little bit. So Mr. Ewell is working on that um, RFQ. We're going to be putting it out as soon as we can get FAA and FDOT to sign off on it um, because we are getting ready to roll into another AIP. In fact, we've been notified, um, I believe, that we have been awarded that grant. We just don't have the grant agreement in yet, and you all approved the execution of that grant agreement last month. So as soon as it comes in, we can turn it around and get it back. But we want to go out for a bid for those airport engineers first. And if I could, like, add you're, you're fine right there. Well, thank you. But uh, adding uh, yeah, sure. uh, to what Logan said about uh, increasing the advertising and the travel budget for me and our, and uh, hopefully our uh, engineering firm, was not so much to go to other fly-ins and stuff. There are a number of conferences throughout the year. The National Business Aircraft Association is a huge event. It, they, they, it's so big they only have it in Orlando or Las Vegas. Uh, they swap back and forth for that. And there are some aircraft maintenance uh, uh, big seminars that uh, we think we've got a chance to go out and say, hey, here we are, Land Ridge, uh, you know, we were Southwest and distributorship down here. It's, it's more to professional so, type seminars okay. than it is to so fly-ins okay. and okay. stuff to try and get our name out there. Because we're a you know, legitimate commercial uh, airport. Perfect. Uh, Thank you. For Mr. things like that. Okay. Any questions about airport? Okay. Moving on to the golf fund. You can see that the transfers have continuously gone down based on our franchise agreement. Um, we still have the same revenues coming in as last year. The restaurant lease um, will have the transfer from general fund, but that's based on the debt payment. And then the, a balance to budget, or a budget to balance. So the only thing that's new in this year, and we will be seeing it, is that we do have a revenue sharing agreement in that contract that says that after $520,000 of gross receipt sales, we do receive 20% after that. And therefore, half of that money that we receive, half of the 20% that we receive in, half will go to general fund and half has to stay in the golf course to be used for um, capital projects. I'm just wondering if there's any way that we can maybe do some, maybe restructuring of that particular contract, because we have to wait, wait until 500 and something thousand dollars that they secure and we don't get but 20% beyond that point and uh, I don't think that's a good deal for the city. I believe that is a what five year contract? Yeah. And and so my my only argument to that and I, I do understand where you're coming from because the numbers are <coughs> bigger shock. However, we do need a few years to see the yeah, trend sure. and see for us to even be able to throw out a number. If you know, if we said, "Oh, we want every or 20% over 200,000," we don't know how to really gauge that because I know that there it fluctuates, right? Seasonal. There's one month where you have a lot of golf going on, one month you have rain, and there's not a lot of golf. So I would like to see a trend before we even sit down to renegotiate. Um, I think that the contract, it is what it is right now. I can tell.
tell you there's the transfer from general is a lot better than two hundred thousand um, dollars so I, I do see where you're going and your points um, however I would like to have a little bit of a trend before we made an analysis because when you go to sit down to you know um, pursue an agreement or a contract we really need to know what we want out of it right. I, I just like this I would like to see them Absolutely. at least at some point become uh, self-sustaining if at all possible. Absolutely. I know golf courses generally don't make um, make money or whatever, but if if we can continue to push that number down, that would really help our you, uh, citizens. Commissioner, if you if you recall a few years ago, when we 2014, 15, right before the, the the contract was negotiated, prior to the franchise agreement coming into place. They were at about eighty-eight thousand. The following year, we we're, were, we're, were pushing three hundred thousand. You know, we we're at two hundred and sixty thousand or so. And so, to be in a position where we're only pulling forty-seven thousand out of the general fund at this time, it's um, it's it's significantly more sustaining. I, you know, I think it, I agree. At the sunset of the franchise agreement, there may be some additional opportunities. But if it becomes a zero-sum game for us, I, I think it's a win for the entire community. Yeah. Uh, the golf course is bringing a lot of people in, um, and it's not having the same effect on our budget overall. And I think that we need to remember <coughs> that golf course is recreation. The golf course not only is recreation, it's economic development. We can't attract doctors and, and you know things, people who play golf and executives without having a golf course, and we're the only game in town, and it's a Donald Ross course. It's worth our working really hard and maybe putting a little bit of money towards it and calling it recreation until we can get a break even. It's just, no, it's, just not, it's not that costly to go out there or whatever. So it's very low cost as it relates to that particular sport. So we, and we got the people who play those sports. Those people are pretty, they got, they got the fun. And <laughs> this commission money. and staff has come a long way. From those two hundred and fifty, three hundred thousand dollar deficit, we're heading in the right direction. I mean, I just, I just need to make that comment. I agree. Yeah. Right. Okay. We're okay with golf course. Yeah. Can we move on. Okay. So we're going to move on to sanitation. Um, <laughs> so in the prior years, um, a six and a half increase to garbage fees was recommended. We are actually doing six and a half. We propose a six and a half increase to residential, and then a 15% to commercial garbage fees. Um, <laughs> I will let Mr. Griffiths speak to um, the reasoning. Uh, race for sure. Um, this is the right for the yes. 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 Okay. Um, we did an analysis of the expenditures for non-residential collection and residential collection. Let me go up here, sir. Yeah. Just speak up. Just speak up a little bit. Um, what we found out is that non-residential collection, um, the rate was not covering the true cost for basically. I say non-residential. That's our commercial collection. Mm -hmm. uh, that is three ninety uh, per pickup per yard currently. Um, the true cost is somewhere in the range of five dollars and twenty-two cents per yard per pickup. Now we all have <coughs> around us um, as a bearing. Uh, Waste Pro, the lowest rate that they have per yard is $5.04, and that's if you have an eight yard dumpster, but they range anywhere up, upwards to $11.53 per yard per pickup. We look at Vanel, uh, we look at some other areas there, it averages about seven to eight dollars. Uh, what we're proposing to do is instead of doing a consistent percentage increase regardless of customer type, we would like to do a higher percentage increase for the non-residential customers. Um, I can go into more detail. I believe we've all discussed it. You know, as a residential customer, you pay a land billing fee. As a commercial customer or multifamily over a certain number of units, you do not. Therefore, those tipping fees need to be passed on to that type of customer. Otherwise, the um, entire customer base is, is covering that cost. So, Logan, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think for non-residential, we're proposing 15% to get to the 522, that would be 34%. We thought that was a bit much in the 
cents. So tell me the significance of that. Yeah, so that's the 15% on the 390. Okay. So if you add those together, that's 15 the 15% of the 390. Okay. Right, right. Okay. And that's the increase, the 15% of the 449. Correct, correct. Okay. Um, so any questions about the rates? We'll move on to the expenditures. What would a typical bill look like? A typical bill? Yeah. Uh, so if you have a two yard dumpster five days a week, so I'll do some math for you, sir. As he's doing the math, I'll move on okay. to the yeah, we'll one, I want to know what residential is How much is Six and a half that you agreed on last year. Okay. Yes, yeah, second year. Six and a half. You said it's the second, second year. year. Six and a half. Right. It's the same standard increase. Yeah. It, it is. To outpay CPI. Yeah. Um, so sanitation, again, we have an $11 living wage increase. We have the driver's living wage increase um, based on the CDL. We're adding an additional driver to sanitation to help with some of the um, routes and workloads. We're purchasing a rear loader. And um, we have the transfers for the franchise fees and the public works building. Public works building has been in there for a couple years, so neither one of those are new to you all. Is it a rear loader or front loader? <laughs> I I had it as front loader. Okay. So I think correct to me. Okay. It's a rear loader. Gotcha. And then there's a side loader also. Wow. So if you want to make. <laughs> yeah. He kind of explained it. <laughs> if you want to make. Yeah. yeah. I'm like, is it a vehicle? Is it so. a top loader? But also one of the things that. One, one of the things that we should be, we should note, is that with the increase in the wages, it's a lot of it's coming because of um, a lot of the efficiencies that have been put in place, getting control over the the, the business accounts, the commercial accounts for um, trash pickup, as well as um, some of the other things that are going on as far as garbage collection on the side of the road. And so, because of the work that's been going on in public works uh, and the savings that have come as a part of that, it's allowed us to be able to to really pass those savings on to. The employees and so that's been um, I think really just a testament to the work that's been done in the house okay, yeah. so we, do more pick ups. we do more pickups in the county does we, we do significantly more and that's one of the things that it has been a conversation um, when you look at the rates for example the waste pro I sit on the side of the waste disposal mm -hmm. committee for task force for the county but when you look at what's in their contract and you look at the fees that are passed on we just had a um, a solid waste disposal fee of three thirty two. Well now it's a one one dollar savings overall in the county. But when you look at the fees that are passed on in the county versus what we're charging in the city, it's almost it's it's almost what two to one difference in uh, uh, actually I have that number so I, I calculated everything per <coughs> yard per pickup. And obviously as a resident inside the city you have a half yard container you can pick up twice a week. That's fifty two yards a year. That works out to three dollars and sixty cents per yard in the county. Assuming if I live in the city or the county, I'm going to generate the same amount of waste. I only get picked up once a week. The land or the collection fee is $111 per resident. That works out to $2.13 per yard. Can we get a copy of those uh, oh, the numbers? numbers? Yeah. So I like right. to, I like to understand that as well. Three sixty per yard for the residents. Okay. okay. We'll get this okay. All right. And I have just an example bills. If you'd like to hear this. Would you like to hear an example bill? Yes. yes. Okay, so for commercial or non-residential, a two-yard dumpster, a five-day collection, um, their bill is going to go from $168 to $194 a month. And for residential, your bill will go from $1,563 to $1,665 a month. Oh, huh. Sweet. $1,563 to $1,665? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. Minuscule. What you may see in the coming years is when we actually get the share of costs, um, attributed to each type of collection, you might see a reduction in the increase to residential uh, oh. than, than what we were originally proposing last year. Wow, thank you, sir. You're welcome. Any additional questions? Well, great work. Moving on. Okay. We have made it to our final fund, the utility fund. Hmm. So we are proposing to keep the same tier structure that we have in place for the consumption and do a six and a half follow suit with um, garbage, do a six and a half increase. Then for the base rates, we are um, proposing to be lower than the FRWA and the statute. We just felt as if our last workshop and meetings on these rates that going up to be anywhere really close to them, you know, is extremely high. 
Um, <clears throat> so we're going to put a structure in place that gets us there to where we can work towards that. Jonathan, if you want to speak to the how the ratios are set up. So the ratios represent the service um, size connection. And the logic is, and this is the AWA standard right now, is that based upon the demand that you put on the system, you should pay for that demand. Uh, for instance, as a residential customer with a 5 8 inch meter, 3 quarter inch, or even 1 inch meter, the size of the line servicing you can be much smaller than servicing a 10 inch customer. Uh, and what this does is it, it's similar to what we're looking at in sanitation. Is we want to make sure that we're equ equitably distributing the cost to the customers based upon the demand uh, that they have. Um, so like Ms. Becker stated, we're not where we should be, the industry standard, um, but as you're well aware, when we had the original rate discussion, that is too, too much of an increase for our customers to take at this point. So what we'd like to do is come in well below, but have the proper rate structure in place to build upon it for the years to come. And we do have the rate structure in a few minutes. I'll show you that in example bills for you. Um, expenditures in this fund, we have reallocated a vacant position to capital outlay needs. This is based upon a the improvement. Kayla, I don't know if you want to speak to it or Mr. Griffith. Ms. Wiley um, does great work. And she was given an assignment to review the operating permit at the water treatment plant um, and working with the EP of rural water uh, based upon our plant size, our treatment processes, and our um, population service size, we're able to reduce the number of licensed operators that we have to have at the plant. Uh, thereby, we're able to transfer the cost of that salaried or hourly position over to capital without an increase to the budget. Wow. Great work. That's what I'm talking about. So, <laughs> yeah. those are the kind of things, those are the kind of things we need to see, you know, yeah. from reports and stuff. I mean, this is awesome work. Everybody don't look to work efficiently and, and effectively, and this it just don't come out of all. I mean, everybody's organization. So, thank y'all for. She deserves all the credit. <laughs> thank you. <Woo -hoo. laughs> um, we also have the living wage increase, eleven dollars an hour in here. We will have, um, or we do have the fourteen dollars an hour in here also for four individuals, I believe. Uh, they also will hold a CDL license or will work towards that. Um, we have capital outlay expenditures. There's a long list in there. Um, you can see that they're doing a lot of work. Um, we're able to, based on this structure that we're putting in place, is really work towards the capital outlay. That is the goal of this fund. Um, this is where we talked about the grant administrator and the resource manager coming and being split, so you've already seen that. And then, um, of course, we have the debt service for the SRF. This is where the Big Water Loan SRF is. Um, I'm going to move on before, to the rate before, structure. Oh, no, before, go ahead. Before we move on, uh, Mr. Griffin, just kind of give a, a, a little insight as to what's coming down the pipeline that relates to the plant overall. Well, there's there's quite a bit, so I'm going to leave something off. So I apologize to everybody in the back of the room. But we'll talk about your project. Uh, we have the reclaim project that's underway that actually um, is uh, part of the biosolids uh, process in the wastewater plant. Um, so that project is in the budget. Um, you will most likely see the uh, budget um, increased mid-year when we go after an SRF loan uh, for the biosolids and digesters at the wastewater plant. Um, currently in the budget is a significant amount of match funding in the water and sewer distribution to assist with the upcoming potable uh, distribution projects as well as the hazard mitigation projects Ms. Tucker was able to secure for the list station upgrades and hopefully some lining. Um, like I said, I know I'm forgetting something. Uh, we're doing some list station upgrades and then we're going to be looking at replacing a list station. We did an analysis of St. John's and Ziegler this year and with the impending development along that corridor, uh, rather than just replace the station because it's uh, almost near uh, the end of its uh, useful life, we're probably going to be looking at increasing the size of that station as well as the pumps. It's kind of past the, the, the year of its <laughs> useful life, uh, but also talking about the, re the, the impending replacement of the water plant as well. From the yes, year. yeah. Uh, Ms. Uh, Tesquale is working um, with an engineer at Rural Water right now uh, under the uh, hydrogen peroxide pilot study and they're actually evaluating um, the treatment processes to determine the most suitable um, water treatment plant that we're going to have to have in the next five to seven years. 
Can I ask it the same time? We, we got so much uh, water now. Check to see if we'll be able to sell. There's some cities mm. that are, are now <laughs> bottling their water and selling it. I just want to put that, plant that yeah, seed in your head. Yeah, you ain't getting a plant. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you getting that water from? Once it goes through the pipes, that's what messes it up. So they, they it's can't get it's that water. It's great coming out of the plant. Just, just go ahead. Uh, to speak to Vice Mayor Brown's comment, when we did the grand opening on that water treatment plant, that was one of our um, gifts that we gave out to people who were there. We had refreshments. It was a big ribbon cutting. It was a beautiful plant. And we actually have labels because we bottled our own water and gave away cases of water to people who were attending. And that's what they were drinking while they were there. And it was a really nice touch, really nice touch. Because what's wrong with our water is the pipes that it goes through. When it comes out of that plant, it's well, Jonathan had his little display up there one night, you know, yeah. how, how it yeah. looked when it came to yeah. here. So it kind of got close. Yeah. Okay. Um. That'll be a bill. Still walk. <laughs> <laughs> so keep in the back of your mind that we are in, we are getting to a critical point for both our, for both our wastewater treatment plant yeah. as well as our water plant. Um, and we need to be conscious that the, soon there will be, you know, we, we've been buying time for the last four years and really the last 14 years as it relates to the wastewater treatment plant, waiting for appropriations to come into place. We put in the mechanism so that we can actually do it um, through SRF, um, and we need to go ahead and look at pulling the trigger at some point. And if we get the additional appropriation, then it's a bonus for us. Um, but we, I, I don't think we can kick that can much farther um, without getting into a critical situation. I think on the other side of it, we've got to prepare. Um, for the water plant as well, and this is the time to do it, not when the repairs become a, uh, to the point of no return. And so I, I think we're on the right track as far as infrastructure is concerned throughout the entire city, um, from replacement of potable um, to making sure that our structures are in place, that we've got the proper equipment, and then the next thing that we'll talk about at some point in the future will be stormwater which is a conversation in itself that will become the scariest conversation we've ever had. So we need to have that conversation. And it's a, soon, it's a conversation sooner than later. Can we get a snip bit of it? You don't want it today. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so this is what your current structure, great structure looks like in your proposed. You'll see whenever we talk about keeping the um, consumption uh, tier structure the same, this is what Per gallons. This is exactly the same, but it's six and a half percent increase from here to here. This is where um, Mr. Griffiths was talking about our base rate for the meters are going to be based on these meter sizes. So um, here's your residentials, and I believe most residentials are what at the five eight or less than five eight three four eight. Right. Okay, someone. So they're up here, and then we have more of your non-residential. <coughs> Same with the wastewater, same exact scenario. <clears throat> and then I'm going to move to so that you can see. These are the bills and the proposed bills. And I don't know if you, if it's I don't think they have one of those. You don't, okay, so I can get you a copy of this. Um, we started with a four person household, two and one. If you'll look across the columns, we have the current city and the city proposed. We did the percentage increases. This is what it's compared to St. Augustine. Here's your monthly difference and the annual difference. So I know whenever we, we last spoke or we last presented, we told you it's kind of like a teeter-totter, you know. We, we didn't want to move the residentials or mess with them too much. So then the commercial goes up. So we're trying to find a really good balance, and I believe Mr. Griffith has worked really hard on this. Um, to come up with a good option for the city. Um, we have a regular four-person household. Your average household will go up $7 a month, $7.98 a month. Way yeah. mm -hmm. um, A one-person household, $4.94 a month. We get down to the box stores, which would be like your Walmart, your Home Depot, Lowe's, that sort of thing. They're going up $4.59, $7.11. So this is a lot different than the structure that you saw last time where it was thousands of dollars. Um, what about the jail house? Yes, we have the jail down here, $2,000 increase month. We did um, speak with um, the county and let them know what we were proposing. 
um, and they understood where we were coming from with this. So, school board. We are, as long as you are okay, we didn't want to make too many phone calls, but if you are okay with, with this, I have had some other folks reach out to me and ask, um, where are we at with the rate structure? Of course, everybody wants to tighten up their budgets, mm -hmm. and we told them we did not want to open this can until we had permission from you all to move forward. We have a list of people that we want to make contact with. Okay. If you have a list, you can send it to us. <laughs> But yes, this is definitely a more um, reasonable structure. Mm -hmm. I believe it takes into consideration everything that you asked. Okay. Yeah, I, th I think um, the, really the most critical part of it for us was to make sure that every community partner, every citizen had at least some ample notice as to the increases that were coming and that we, that we did it during the time in which they could adjust their budgets to deal with it. Um, and, I, and I think phasing it in the way that the approach has been taken, it it at least gives people a better opportunity to kind of know. Because most of what I've, what I've heard from a lot of the larger agencies is that they knew at some point it was going to come. <coughs> it just didn't, they just didn't want it to come in the magnitude that it, that it, that it approached us. And so, um, you know, it, there's a big difference between 2000 and 13,000. And I think um, it, it, everybody's kind of had an opportunity to prepare and they kind of see that as they proceed on throughout the budget year. And it still gives us an opportunity to go back in and recapture more. Right. And so I wanted to point out again, as Mr. Griffith said earlier, is this structure is going to put us in place to move toward. We are not there, mm -hmm. but it's going to move us towards that point. So just wanted to highlight that. Any questions? Any more before we move on? I think we only have one more slide. Okay. So. Yeah. No, I think we're good. Everything okay. good so far. Okay, so this is just looking forward. So I know there's been a lot of talk. It's going to be on the ballot. This is something that um, we're getting questions about. I have questions on. So Amendment 1 basically is just to raise the portion of the home's value um, that can be exempted from non-school property taxes. If this should pass, the city will lose $22,987. And this is per the property appraiser. They sent me some of these figures. 23K. <clears throat> Amendment 2 um, is to make a permanent cap on an annual non-homestead property assessments. And if this fails to pass, so if it does not pass, the city will gain 74336 okay. So vote no, no. I'm just kidding. So, <laughs> so one of the things that we have to think about from the city's perspective is, you know, how do we send the messages out um, to the citizens, one that's in their best interest and also in the best interest of the city. Our bills are paid with their taxes, and they just need to know that they don't pay taxes, we can't pay bills. You mean how to get it out to the communication piece? Right. And, and so that, and so when you look at that, just going back to what we put in the budget overall, that's when having that that PIO in place, yeah. having uh -huh. that public information officer in place, they're able to put those messages out to the to the citizenry so that it benefits us. And well, what do, about the? Oh, I'm sorry. We do walk a fine line because the legislature has forbidden us to lobby for these things, but we can't educate. We cannot we can't, right. put up billboards saying right. vote no. Right, 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 right. But we can't educate. We and will there be a no, for, They can call you can in. The, you can put the numbers up and show right. the impacts of show what impacts. each one does for the city. So we can say think about it. Right before you pull the lever so or apply the box. From that standpoint, I mean, from in terms of getting that word out, um, we can send bills out. We send those bills out. We can... And um, have a number that they can call in. Call, like, a, like, like the school board sent, you know, can uh, I, I roll, roll, roll those... Um, it's no different than what happened in Better Place. And, right. And, uh, yeah. and uh, Mr. Riggs has had a significant amount of um, experience right. dealing with that. So we can, okay. we can get something out to, to make sure that between... Uh, with staff, we with that we actually educate our, our consumers. Right. Maybe, maybe, maybe the newspaper will let us oh, write a How about that, tool. Nick? What you think about that, Nick? <laughs> about putting some educational stuff in the newspaper, educating our uh, community about what we you know about the amendments and how it may affect how us. they're going to affect services. <clears throat> in the city. You have answers both. Right. <laughs> so, <anyway. laughs> See, yeah. Well, we just want to throw that phone out there. So we find ourselves at the end of our first budget session. Uh, I, I definitely think that um, we need to 
give Ms. Becker a, a, a round of applause. Oh, standing over back there. That's an awesome, awesome, awesome she, she's I'm giving All the directors. All, 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 all the directors. All the To our department heads as well. Yes, uh, absolutely. Yes, they help. We want to commend you guys. We want to commend you guys for the tireless hours that you've spent um, working on this budget. It's not every day that people walk out of budget sessions happy. Yes. Um, but I, I think okay, when you, when, but but you know, I think when you look at the, <laughs> you when you, when you look at the wrong. fiscal position of where the city was not very long ago, um, to where we are today, I, I think we've um, we've been able to to put ourselves in a position. To upgrade a lot of different in a lot of different places as far as equipment is concerned, um, we just got notice of the first grant coming through for uh, fire trucks. Uh, you know, new sweepers, new equipment throughout um, that puts us in a position where we can actually function. We're no longer at 5.9 percent reserves, um, A plus bond ratings, all those different things. They, they they put us in a position where operationally, you guys can continually do the great job that you're doing. And pass those and pass those savings on to our to our staff. Um, you know, but we're we're nowhere near out of the woods. Um, a great concern, one that we did and spent a whole bunch of time talking about, and we just took delivery to clamship. Um, and so and now we've, we've got a, an additional opportunity to deal with some of the calls that come in about yard debris on a regular basis. But it all gives us an opportunity to to, to provide a greater level of service to our citizens. Um, but it also takes a team effort, and so I'm, I'm really excited about where we are, how we're going to continue to move the community forward as a whole. Um, but we got to make sure that we, we're conscious about stormwater and, and our continuing plan and infrastructure. I think uh, both Ms. Tucker and Mr. Driggers, I mean, I'm sorry, Mr. Griffith, along with um, everyone in the back, Mr. Ladd, uh, Mr. McCann, everybody overall, um, we've all, from the water plan, we've all put this thing in place where, uh, Kayla, we put it all in place where now we're starting to attack that 130 year problem that's been out there for the longest. You know, I was over on uh, Fifth, I was over on Main Street, Sixth and Main, and there was, a, there was another line out there. We, you know, we, we've got another break. And so we're starting to move forward. I think if we can stop getting calls about St. John's Avenue, it'll no. save a whole bunch more time. But we're moving forward and, a, you know, a new public work building goes a long way towards uh, morale of, of staff. You know, it's kind of like having a new airport terminal. And uh, just changing the working conditions, changing the environment, it puts us in a position where we're, we're, we're moving forward. And I think having this budget in place, um, minor tweaks have to be made um, to continue on, it says a lot. You know, for your first budget session, she's um, awesome. You know, Amazing. The, Man, I, I think the, the, the way that you presented it, it makes it a lot easier for folks to see it, yeah. uh, and it, it, it kind of works for you know for a layman who comes in and looks at it, yeah. and it, it also creates an easier transition overall. And and that's really my comment. I'm excited about where we are and about moving forward, um, and it's just a matter of creating greater cohesiveness and a, and a better service for our citizens. Commissioner Bor, I never felt so so good about coming out of budget, and you know this is the first year we've had it this smooth and. Uh, just like um, even a caveman can understand it. So, I mean, it's, you laid it out just that simple, and we certainly appreciate all the work you've done and all of, with all the directors and everybody in their respective places, while well, HR and the rest of the group, uh, we, we, we just, our hats off to you, and we certainly appreciate all y'all done for us this year. Thank you. Are we good with this budget workshop and updates at the CRA in the next city commission meeting or do we need to schedule such a workshop number two? I think. Yeah, we have some commissioners on the side. Well, I think we have minor updates for uh, weeks throughout the from throughout both the CRA and this one. Um, I, I think, for what I'm hearing, um, we can we can schedule that second workshop. That it won't, shouldn't be as long. Mm -hmm. um, the tweaks seem to be pretty simple, mm -hmm. and we can probably do it on the same day that we adopt, like we okay. did last year. Okay, so just so before the September meeting. Is that what you're? I'd suggest at least a week before the session. So that gives you an opportunity to get the paperwork That's and everything right. else in place. Um, That's all I have. Commissioner, you're done? Yeah. Commissioner McCaffrey. Same thing here. I express my gratitude. Um, my second time being able to do this, and I can tell you I feel really good coming out of these one on ones and coming out of this meeting. So thanks a lot. Hats off to everyone. Commissioner 
Mayor Campbell. I think we have a fine group of um, leaders. Every department, I'm quite sure, had to sacrifice something, but you all work with what you had. Um, and kudos to each and every department head um, for doing what you did. Um, some of them I witnessed. Uh, them cutting to make things happen, and I'm excited to see at the bottom line that we are in a good place. Um, as everyone else stated, presentation was great. I like the way we started off. It kind of loosened, <laughs> loosened you up when you're dealing with numbers. Sometimes you can be very tense, mm -hmm. but starting off with that, um, I think that was a very good way to kind of loosen us up to be open to what it was that you had to present to us, so kudos for that. I'm excited. We're heading in the right direction, and in time we can save money, that's even better. I know I missed a couple of months and a couple of meetings, but I, I've been bugging some people. And I want to remind us, we have, we're better together. And this meeting shows that we've got a bunch of new hires here, new people that haven't been with us a long time, but they jump right in. Mm -hmm. like to thank those people that's been with us all of the time because oh, yeah. they've not, not always had the best of times in working but cutting their budgets. They spent a lot of extra hours and a lot of extra time. And I think it was great that we came in one-on-one -on -one and sat down and talked to them because you know, it gives us more time to process and it doesn't seem to be that we're just doing it like this that we understand and they listen to what we said too as we are eyes and ears for you in the community. So thank all of you very much and keep up the good work so you keep all of us looking good because that's what you do. Um, and, and I'll be remiss if I don't make sure I, I thank Mr. Lachnick, uh, Steve Lachnick. Absolutely. Oh yeah. Yes. He probably stays a little more busy than he thought he'd be. <laughs> uh, but we definitely appreciate you and really bringing in some innovative thought process as it relates to planning overall um, and a different perspective. I think looking at some of the, the things in the future that are coming up for it's going to be a great it's going to be a great part. Uh, you know, we also have Ms. Kaiser here, Ms. Wiley, uh, new additions to um, to the staff overall, and, and in this budget season, it's, it's been really good. Um, and so with that, I think. Um, we're moving forward. It's always good to put money away yeah. in reserves. What's our number, 224? Uh, no, that's higher than that. Uh-oh. So Get him right, Logan. Yeah. Hold on. 237. Right. Yeah. Right. 243. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Say, that, say that out loud one more time. 243. So right. Got it, Nick? So, okay. Go ahead. Put it in there. <laughs> and so, and, and the good part about us, well, well, the, no, the good part about that, <laughs> we have some new rules. Right, and, and the good part about that is, and, and we've kind of had some interesting conversations about putting money back in reserve. We've been able to fill some essential positions, but I think the other part is, these are all conservative estimates as well, and so it allows us to be able to put resources away to deal with infrastructure and chunks. Um, I think that plan that's in place. Uh, 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 Mr. Griffith and Ms. Tucker have been working that plan over and over again. Yep. Um, they've become uh, <laughs> experts at, <laughs> at cost share grants for water management. Um, and I think we get our name called every time. And yep. so there have been millions of dollars placed there. And, and it's just a good time here. We're going to continue to push forward. Um, just for information, um, and I guess we need to get kind of a, an idea of who's going to be there tomorrow. Uh, Project Putnam is tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock with, uh, <coughs> with Congressman Yoho. Uh, at the and so uh, exactly it's, it's tomorrow morning at nine o'clock it's going to be our quarterly meeting as it relates to the projects I, I think it's critical that we have some someone from uh, public works there um, to kind of talk about the uh, <laughs> projects um, and they're familiar but I think uh, our the fact that we found out that there's more than just the 28 million in potable we've got to deal with some of those make we got to deal with some of those 10 inch lines as well um, We've got to make sure that we're visible and that that, that information continues to come out. Um, so, 10 o'clock, I encourage every commissioner to come out because you're 9 o'clock, I'm sorry, you're, you're 9 o'clock at the, at, the, uh, at the county commissioner's office. Yeah. But it's, it's critical for us yeah. to be there. Because I'm I, sorry, yeah. I won't be. Yeah. If anybody who yeah. can make it, because okay. it, what happens is uh, the greater presence that we have, I think the greater voice that we have as well. Yeah. And so, um, 
staff the staff has done a great job of getting a lot of the um, critical issues that we have out um, overall but the reality is that it's coming forward uh, the reality is that projects are turning in downtown and, and there's going to be some redistribution of assets and we're starting to see people come to Palaka. I just took a group out from New York on this weekend. But we just continue to do the stuff that we're doing and we're going to see the Gym City be restored. Yes, sir. With that in place, we are adjourned.